I was going to say that, that's a nice segue, but we got something more important to talk about. All right. Uh, Tim, would you like to tell us about the poutine thing? The poutine is now cultural appropriation for everyone who isn't uh, from Quebec. I don't understand it. So th- th- yeah, I know. This is in the National Post, the same national newspaper that just brought us the story about how foreign... I don't. I don't even know what like foreign powers, foreign money influenced the last Canadian election. Yeah. Could somebody please remind me which country Quebec is in? Uh, it's in uh, Quebecistan. Quebec belongs to the country of Quebec. People's like saying that poutine is a Canadian thing for this thing that only exists in Canada. That seems appropriate and not appropriation. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. It's, yeah, clearly you're getting I, those terms confused, Marty. I need to remind <laughs> you that Dear Leader has told us that Quebec has no... Uh, not Quebec. Canada has no core identity. Therefore, it is entirely reasonable that the Quebecois culture is its own culture unto itself, separate and distinct from the rest of Canada, because Canada has no core identity. Nick, Nicholas Fabian Ouellette, a Montreal-born graduate student at the University of Vermont, is uh, presented uh, to the Congress of Humanities and Social Services at Ryerson University. Um, he basically, is saying that poutine has been like a dark spot, a tarnishing spot on Quebec culture, and we've been making fun of Quebec for so long because of, you know, oh, they put cheese on their French fry and gravy on their French fries, and and now that uh, poutine has become popular. He's saying everyone is, uh, you know, capitalizing on that, and and that's not fair because it's, it's a Quebecois creation, not a Canadian one. He insists. So curious, am I allowed to eat tortier and pea soup now, or do I? Am I not allowed to eat that stuff too? Or but we never made fun of them for that, so I can still eat that, I guess. How does this work? I, I just want to be culturally sensitive. <laughs> Someone lay out the rules. You know, and, also, and, the ones making fun of poutine were Americans. Canadians always knew poutine was delicious. So, but see, I, like, I have a, a curiosity for the rest of our panel. Does anyone happen to know what our national dessert is? No Google. Uh, oh, the Nanaimo no, bars? No. But, no, but all very good guesses. Beaver tails are Canada's national dessert. Okay. Yeah, and they're delicious. I, I didn't realize that until I traveled outside of Canada and was informed that that is our national dessert because I, much like you guys, figured, you know, Nanaimo bars, lemon squares, Mac Tech, something like Canadian, right? No, a, a Quebecois dish that you can only get in like two places in Quebec and one place in Ottawa. You know, what was the first culture to invent cheese curd? Because if it wasn't the French, then that was culturally appropriated in the creation of poutine. And that's not right. You know, and are French fries really French? I believe you mean freedom fries. I stole those babies from the Irish. Yeah. You stopped culturally appropriating my people. Tim, did you have anything else for your poutine thing? No, I, I think that was it. We've covered it. Uh, we've, we've talked about the, the dark history of poutine and how Quebec has grappled with poutine stigma. And now that they, <laughs> it's popular, that Canada is... is you know, taking advantage of uh, poutine madness and, and riding the and, and you know profiting from riding it. their coattails. It's, it's clearly cultural appropriation. 